Okay, we're going to look now at the next part of chapter 23, investment centers and ROI. So when we're talking about investment centers, we're talking about a center that the manager has responsibility and authority to make decisions that not only affect costs and revenues, but also the assets invested. Meaning, for example, they have the option to buy new equipment or expand their, um, you know, the business itself or, you know, a lot of different things they can do. But they're responsible not only for revenues and expenses, they're also responsible for taking money from that or that part of the organization and reinvesting it into assets to expand and grow and all those types of things. So what this entails more than anything else is um, we would still have our income from operations and we'd still have a divisional income statement. But now I want to look at, okay, how do I compare one to the other? The simplest statement is, well, which one, which division made more money or what area, you know, did better. Um, but there are other more accurate methods of measuring this. Um, so, so a couple of those on the middle of about page 1167 now um, is return on investment um, and residual income. Um, so return on investment, because managers are in control of the amount of assets invested, they should be evaluated based on the use of those assets. One measure that considers this is ROI. ROI is the formula for ROI is income from operations divided by invested assets. So effectively, I'm looking, this invested assets is really how much money I put into it in the first place, right? Because I put money in order to buy assets, um, and now I want to know what money I'm making off of that, that, those purchases. So um, that's what return on investment is. Now you can see they have three divisions here. I'm on page 1,168. They have the Northern Division, the Central Division, the Southern Division. And you can see they invested 350 in one. Central, they invested 700,000. The Southern, they invested 500,000. So if you flip back a page for a second and look at uh, the divisional income statements on 1167, you'll see that if you just compared who makes the most money, you would say that Central Division is the best, Southern Division is next, and Northern is last because Central has the highest income, Southern Division has the second highest income, and Northern has the lowest income. And that is one method of measuring this. But another method is, well, how much did it cost me to make that money? Okay, because if it cost me less, well, I'm gonna invest more where I'm making more um, as a percentage off every dollar that I'm investing. So when I flip back to 1168, you'll see that when I divide my income from operations for the Northern, the Central, and the Southern Division, see the one that's actually returning the best is Northern. Why? Because even though it's net income overall was less, dollars I'm making is less, I put less money into it. I mean, for comparison, Northern Division had half of the investment that Central Division did um, and had, what, $150,000 less investment than the Southern Division did, which is why it flips it on its head here. Notice the Central Division only had a 12% return, even though it had the highest income, and Southern Division had a 15% return um, with the second highest income. Okay, now another method of doing this, I don't have an example problem for this one, um, but it's what's called the DuPont formula. Uh, so to analyze the differences on return on investment, uh, the DuPont formula is something that we can use for that. So effectively, the DuPont, DuPont formula says, um, another method to find the return on investment is to take the profit margin times uh, the investment turnover. A profit margin is pretty straightforward. It's a ratio of income and from sales from operations. Um, so I'm looking at how much of every dollar that I sell, how much is actually going to my bottom line. Uh, investment turnover is the ratio of sales to invested assets. So how efficiently am I using um, the assets that are invested? So effectively what this comes down to, if you look at the top of page 1169, you'll see that we have return on investment equals profit margin time and times investment turnover. Um, and we profit margin, we have the formula there of income from operations divided by sales times sales divided by invested assets. So notice that overall the ROI will come out exactly the same. If you move down on page 1169, you'll see that it comes out the same. Uh, the difference is in the fact that um, you have two separate numbers. You can see not only the profit margins, but you can also see how much you're returning on the assets based on sales, not on income. So it kind of takes the expense aspect out of it. Um, and then we have, again, the ROIs, which came out exactly the same as they did with the normal ROI formula. Okay, so 
The problem we want to look at here is brief exercise 23-4. I forgot to type it up here, but it is on page 1188 again. Page 1188 again. Okay, so I've got 4 All right, it says Briggs Company. Um, this is, by the way, where you'd pause and try this on your own first. Um, but I'll go ahead and go through it now. Briggs Company has income from operations of $36,000. I've got that just listed out here. Um, Invested assets of $180,000 and sales of $720,000. It says use the DuPont formula to compute the return on investment uh, and show A, the profit margin, B, the investment turnover, and C, the return on investment. So the profit margin, remember we just went through, is going to be sales divided by my, um, I'm sorry, my income from operations divided by sales. So income from operations divided by sales. So that is my profit margin. These are usually expressed in a percentage. Okay, it's 5%. Investment turnover is sales divided by invested assets for 4.0. So we didn't invest very much. You notice this, this is much higher than the other ones we were just looking at as the example problem. So then to find my ROI, I can take profit margin times investment turnover, which is 20%, which means that I'm returning 20% for every dollar. So for every dollar that I'm investing, I'm getting 20% back. So theoretically, assuming that I can keep the business as it is, if I put another dollar in there, I should get a dollar 20 back. And if I put another dollar in there, I should get a dollar 20 back. Um, and when I say invest, I'm talking about putting it into an asset. Um, so I'm not really getting the dollar back. I'm getting 20% back because the asset stays as part of the company. And we'll stop there for this part of the chapter two.